Right. So I get excited mostly for these parts where I'm going to go deeper and I'm going to go in. Uh, a, a little pre-warning here. Um, some of the stuff I might be saying and questioning may uh, rock the boat a little bit and give you, could it be possible to give you an existential crisis almost, maybe. So I just want to pre-warn that because that's actually no joke. Um, I'm going to be questioning a lot of the foundational things that were taken for, that are just taken as true here uh, in physics. Not because I want to degrade physics, it's because I want physics to be the best it can possibly be. And I want to be a honest and authentic teacher and to get you to be the same in your own learning. Question things. I want you to question things. And I want to be some teacher that just gives you shit and just says, okay, this is how it is. Accept it and just use it in an exam and that's it. No, we want to question these things and really think about them from scratch. So a little pre-warning, but I'm here. I'm doing this out of love. I'm doing this out of a uh, desire for people to open their mind and to understand. Okay, that being said, so what is a physical quantity? When you look around, even your room, you must notice that you can identify millions of things. You can identify millions of colors. You can identify millions of objects. You can label millions of things. You can label physical quantities as well. Like if we take something like this book here, just from this book, we could literally derive so much of physics from this one book. This book has length, it has mass, it has volume, it has density, it has a speed and acceleration when we drop it. There's so many things that can come just from this simple black book, a simple object. And that's actually a remarkable thing, right? I mean, all of the physics, all of this crazy complex physics has all been derived in a room just like the one that you're sitting in right now. Amazing, no? Anyway, but the question is, what is these, what, what are these physical quantities? And do they even really exist? You know, physics is, in fact, a way of agreement. This thing has mass, right? We'd say that. Oh, it weighs, well, let's say, I don't know, 100 grams. Like, yeah, it weighs 100 grams. Does it weigh 100 grams? Or is that something we're making up for a way to agree? Almost like think about two monkeys or something. Just chilling, being like, do you feel this? You know, you experience a feeling, which now we're calling mass or weight. But it's a way for us to agree on our experience. So I could be like, do you feel this? And you're like, yeah, I feel this. And then we quantify that and we say, okay, so this, ha this is a mass of 0 0.100 grams or whatever. So it's a way of agreement. But in actuality, do these things exist? You'd be like, well, yeah, they exist, man. Just go put it on a scale. Okay, well, who created the scale? We created the scale. Who created the numbers? We created the numbers. Who created the language of mass? And who created the language of weight? Who created the language of grams? These pointing things. We created all of it. So in actuality... I would say and go out on a limb here, these things don't exist out of humanity, out of the human being's mind. But we use these things in physics because it's so useful for us to agree upon our experiences. I can tell you and explain to you that this thing is light. It weighs a certain mass and that's a very powerful because it can allow us to agree on a physical quantity in our experience. This is a profound jump that we made as we can connect our experiences together and agree upon them and then manipulate them. So that's really the play, the, the role that physics is using here in terms of physical quantities. We're using it as a form of agreement rather than an actual expression of truth. And so just a little talk there about physical quantities i'm going out on a limb here because when you bring it into your actual experience you don't see mass you don't see length you don't experience these things they are things that we have created very powerful tools that we have created in order to manipulate and agree upon experience so that's it hopefully you enjoyed that uh introduction here like subscribe and i'll see you later Are you ready?
Are you ready for me to discuss probably one of the most mysterious and interesting phenomena ever found by man? Motion. What is motion? What is it? What is it actually? Everything is in motion. Everything. Right now, sitting here, you are moving at unfathomable speeds, chaotic motion. It might seem like we're still, things are still around you, but it's not. If you take another perspective under the frame, you're sitting in a car, there are things in the car still, but someone looking outside the car, well, the whole car is moving. Same situation, what's happening to you right now. The earth is rotating, it's orbiting the sun, the sun is orbiting the solar system, solar system's orbiting the whatever, the solar system's orbiting the galaxy, the galaxy is crazy, crazy motion happening physically right now to you and me. And if we were to gain just 1% of an ex a perspective on our current situation in regards to the physical motion that we're experiencing, it would disintegrate all of the bullshit, all of the problems that we're having collectively and individually. It will completely recontextualize your life and you know, bring what's important to the forefront of your living, of what you're doing. And that's really one of the powers in physics and philosophy and doing these contemplations. It really cuts away all the shit, all the distractions, all the bullshit that, they, uh, that we're worried about, that we're interested in. And it gets to the point of what is happening and how crazy it is. And that's really the benefit of contemplating here. And the, one of the big benefits of physics itself. However, if we want to go even further into this idea of motion, true motion is emotion. This is the emotion that you feel. This is what really sets in motion so many things for humanity. The congruence you feel with nature, this feeling that you get, this wonder that you feel uh, when you look at nature and observe nature, this is true emotion, true emotion. It's the, it's the stuff that drives humanity forward, makes us discover more. It gives us energy and momentum and it moves us. The great works of the love of Gandhi or the contemplation of Socrates or you know, the psychological depth of Jung, the creative rationale of Einstein. These great works have moved humanity. We stand on the, on the shoulders of giants. We stand on that uh, past motion set by these incredible human beings who were deeply congruent and in touch with nature and it was from this place this emotion that they felt which pushed forward humanity so much and that is true motion it's the emotion you feel towards nature and your experience and your existence this is real motion yeah motion is a very, very interesting thing. It's not simple at all. And gaining perspective on it will give you perspective on everything because everything is moving, including you physically, psychologically, emotionally. So, yeah, that's it. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Okay, so here we go. I want to show you right now or explain to you or make clear to you that the ideas found in physics are actually governing your life, possibly without you even knowing. I mean, probably. In physics, we, we are saying that the universe is conserving everything. It's conserving its energy. And in the case of you, your energy will also be conserved. So you have so much energy, potential, activity, and that energy will be transformed and conserved. And society, 
is basically a filtration for, for your energy. How your energy is being transformed. Society is basically trying to get your energy to fuel whatever agenda or thing that they want. And for the human being, and this is very important, so for the human being, if you want to know where your energy is being transformed or where it's going, because it's going to go somewhere, and and people are aware of this, especially people in power, they're aware it's your energy is going to go somewhere. If you want to know where your energy is going, for the human being, their energy and these conserved properties are contained within their awareness. So where your awareness and attention is. For example, let's say that you're scrolling on TikTok for hours. You're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Well, there, therefore your attention is on TikTok. That means that you're transforming the energy, which is going to be conserved regardless, to TikTok. You're giving it your attention, thus giving it your energy. And you must have to reflect upon that and say, do I want to give my energy away to TikTok, let's say, as an example? Do I want to give my attention away? And I really want to hammer home or make you feel your energy and your attention is your most vital resource. And so you should be aware and conscious of where you are giving it away because that energy is going to be conserved regardless. And so society at large is a filtration system, as I said before, for your energy. Everyone is trying to basically all the companies and businesses and stuff like this and structures are trying to get your energy. That's, that's what they're designed for. Let's say if you go out and you work a job, you're giving away your energy and time and attention for money. You then spend that money, uh, I don't know, buy a Gucci bag or some shit. Okay, you're then trans that's a transformation of energy as well. You're giving away your energy in the form of money, which is now giving you this Gucci bag. And so then you've transformed that energy to the company Gucci. So you can see what I mean here. And that's this all comes from physics, this sort of understanding. So you have to be aware and sort of conscious of how you're distributing your own energy because it's your most vital resource. Because how you use your energy is how you're going to use your life. I don't really know how to make it clearer than that. Your energy and attention is very important. It's your most vital resource. And I hope maybe I've given you some insight and maybe some inspiration that you should try and use it the best possible way. You know, use it like for, for channels like Intuitive. Give your attention away to some people that care about you, that actually give a shit and want the best for you. Maybe these companies or where you're giving your energy, they don't actually care about you. They don't give a shit about you. So they just, they did, do they deserve your attention? Does TikTok deserve your attention? This much attention? It's so valuable and you're just giving it away for free. I especially see that with the younger generation. But yeah, that's it. Hopefully that was insightful. Just wanted to show how physics can be, is related directly to the functions of society and your own life. That's it. Um, you know what to do, man. Like, subscribe. Brush up against that like button. It likes it. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. I want you to notice that you're not actually doing any physics. What is physics? Physics, very simply put, is the act of observing. Cute, meticulous observation. And so you're not actually doing any physics. You're just learning uh, the physics that has been done by others. And so let's actually do some physics. Let's learn how to do physics. How do we observe? I want to teach you here that observation is learning. Deep observation of something that is learning. If you observe something without thinking about it, just purely observing it, you will learn something about it. You will know something about it, which you can't systemize. You can't express. There's something you just know about it. And this all comes from deep observation, pure, clear observation. And so your mind and body, this 
thing that you have in your possession is the best apparatus in the universe for observing and understanding reality. That's the case I'm making. Pretty bold claim, but I believe it's true. I mean, I know it's true. And so let's say if we wanted to learn or observe or understand gravity or force, well, what we do is we'd simply relax our body, our mind, we'd calm our mind, we'd slow down our breathing and we would observe and make relevant in our experience the feeling of gravity, the force. Close your eyes maybe, and you'd feel gravity, the force of gravity. And your mind will wander, it will go off, but you basically keep coming back, you keep coming back, and you feel this force. And I'm basically saying to you that if you do that you will learn about it in a, in a different way that you've been learning for all of this all of the other other side of your education by doing this deep observation you will know something about it which can't be taught to you and this is a very powerful technique so you calm yourself down and you observe you try and remove yourself from the observation don't think about it. Don't put yourself onto it. What do I really mean by that? Don't, don't put your own agenda onto the experience that you're having of gravity, the phenomenon of gravity. Don't place yourself onto that. It's going to taint your experience. Don't think of like, how is this useful to you? Don't think like that. Don't, don't observe it for a purpose. Observe it to learn about it. You can do this with anything you want in life. If you want to learn about something, observe it. Don't learn about anything. Simply observe it. It's a powerful, powerful technique, and this is not the way they teach you. So, to make it clear, observation is learning. To observe is to learn. It's a very powerful thing I'm saying to you, and I hope I hope it lands. I really hope it does, because if this is a transform transformative um, sort of practice that you can use to understand things around you. Okay, that's it. Uh, hopefully you do enjoy and uh, observed and learnt in this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and if you're in need of any A2 content, all of that is on either Vimeo or Patreon. Much love, and I'll see you when I see you. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about balance and equilibrium because it's something that uh, pops up all the time in physics, uh, justifiably so, because for some reason, some peculiar reason, the universe always tends towards balanced states. The universe, if we take a holistic or large perspective on it, in all sort of systems and scenarios, uh, it tends towards balance and equilibrium. So the universe has a sort of divine balance. Its essence is balanced. It just tends towards balanced equilibrium states which is amazing because without that sort of property, inherent property that it has, I mean, I wouldn't even be here, you wouldn't even be here, we wouldn't be here. It takes a lot of balance to even produce intelligent life. Well, that's what it seems like. And so, you know, when we look at this, it's very interesting that the universe does this. And the more you look at it, the more you observe the universe, the more you realize how balanced it really is. It's crazy, it's, uh, it's beautiful, it's amazing. And so a big component of my work is trying to get, get us, all of us, as we're learning, especially physics, to um, live in accordance with nature and emulate that. So one of the things I want you to ask yourself is, you know, how can I be more balanced? It's a great question to ask yourself because the universe is so balanced and tends towards balance. It seems to value balanced states. So how do we as individuals and being a part of, if not nature itself, be more balanced because it seems like the most balanced individuals are the people that we really want uh, influencing uh, humanity so you should really ask yourself how do i be more balanced in my life how do i bring more balance to the world because from that place we can definitely see that we thrive in balanced state when we're out of balance especially just on an individual level we're really um 
We're in a sort of chaotic, crazy state. It's not very good for us and people around us. A little take on balance, but the universe is divinely balanced and it's beautiful. Uh, that's it. If you need any A2 content, it is on my Patreon. Uh, peace and love. Right, so what do we really learn from studying pressurized systems? What we really learn is that pressurized systems produce large amounts of energy. You know, steam and stuff like this create pressurized system. We can produce large amounts of energy. And really the idea is all embedded in this sort of topic, which we're, you've just been introduced to. Um, these ideas really accelerated human life. I mean, this would be the cause of the industrial revolution and it accelerated human life a lot. I mean, if we started to produce a lot more, you know, because we could use these pressurized systems to enhance our lives and, you know, our survival. And really that's the power in physics and science, the scientific method is that we use it to gain insight into the nature of reality. And then we sort of use that insight so in this, in this scenario, you know, pressured systems to enhance our own survival, evolve us, um, and basically elevate us to a point almost above nature itself. And it's, I don't want to be cliche, but I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. And so are we even ready for this power? I mean, are we psychologically mature enough for this power? Because I feel like we misuse it. It's almost like nature shows us these amazing properties and things that it has. And like I said in my previous video on talk, you know, nature has an inherent property of balancing itself out. And if we sort of take these insights and then just use it for our own self-interest to gain for just humanity, we only think about ourselves. It's, it's quite myopic, short-sighted. And, you know, there, I feel like there will be massive ramifications. If not, there's already ramifications for this. Treating the earth, let's say just for an example, as just a place to harvest, you know, resources and use to elevate ourselves to higher levels. Um, you know, there will be consequences to this. The earth is not an unintelligent. If you think the earth is just some stupid rock, I mean, you're, you're, you're deeply mistaken. It will balance itself out and it, and, you know, if we push too far, we, we don't, uh, we get cocky almost. There will be ramifications for this. Now, this does worry me a little bit. I don't want to freak you out. And so, you know, the scientific method has given us amazing insight into the world, into the universe. But are we using that power correctly? Are we mature enough to use it? I don't know. I'm not sure, but... It seems like we don't really care. We only care about ourselves and pushing the agenda of humanity. See how that turns out, but <laughs> like we should be a little more careful, a little more mature with uh, the insights that we get, the knowledge that we obtain from science. Uh, I even think about that when I think about AI and where that's going. But anyway, I'll stop now. That's all from me. If you need uh, A2 content, it's on Patreon. Um, I will eventually do A2 physics as well after this, but that's it. Uh, peace out. Let's talk. I mean, if you're even watching to the end of these, and you, this, this, these parts are engaging you, you're already clocked in to something. If this is engaging you, you're, you're feeling something here. Let's talk, man. Let's talk about this. Like, what is a solid anyway? Like, what does it mean for something to be material? Physical. We live in a physical world, right? That's what, that's what we're being told. That's, that's, that's the ideas that science is giving us. We have this material world and then conscious, consciousness or things arise out of it, these secondary phenomena. You know, what, 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 is, what, is a phys, what, what does it mean for something to be solid anyway? What does that mean? You know, if you think that's a silly question, not that I think you do, if you think it's a silly, I mean, you're, you're literally surrounded by solid material objects. Yeah. I'm assuming for most people, they don't even ask the question, well, what, what is a solid object? What is a material? What is it? 
well, where do we draw the line, right? Is a thought material? Is, I don't know, an emotion material? Am I a material? You know, am I physical? Am I phys just a physical thing? Is that it? Doesn't it feel like that? You know, we live in this physical world, right? We live in this physical world, but yet, I mean, we're all guided by, you know, ethereal, immaterial things. You know, we're guided by who we, who we, you know, who we fuck with, who we like, emotion, feeling, um, you know, looking at myself, if I turn in, you know, that's, who is that thing? That's not a material thing. Huh? If something is, it seems like the consensus is, okay, there's this material world, and then there's these immaterial things that come out of it. Is that the way to look at it? I don't know. I mean, I'm just like, let's just talk. I'm not, the thing is, I'm not trying to tell you anything. I'm not trying to sit here. This isn't like a lecture part. I'm not just sitting here being like, this is how it is. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just exploring it. I'm open to it. I'm open to explore all these ideas. I'm open to question everything. I'm open to yarn about everything. You can yarn about whatever you like. But with physics in particular, you know, they, they make some pretty bold statements. You know, we live in a physical world. That's a bold statement. Do we? I don't know. That's a pretty bold statement. You know, I've got some queries. <laughs> so I have a lot of evidence in my own life to suggest differently. That not everything is material. And maybe the material world isn't the primary guiding force here. So yeah, I don't want to make it too long because I don't want to make the video too long, but that's it. I'm just having a fat yarn. I'm having a yarn. So yeah, peace out. A rather large pre-warning here. The idea that I'm going to present to you right this second could be psychologically uh, taxing. Um, this idea basically is what drove me into physics, along with many others, but this basically this idea that I'm going to talk about um, drove me into studying physics to a master's level deep into quantum mechanics, quantum field theory, to basically understand this, which is basically the idea that there's nothing in the, in the perspective of physics, there's nothing physical about reality. Physics, we try to model phenomena that we observe. And physically, there's nothing actually solid about reality. It's more fluid and wave-like. There's nothing actually there. Very strange. And I don't want to go too far into this. I just want that idea to land. When we look into the, this stuff, there's nothing physical there, solid. This idea of things being I guess we'd call it atomizing, where we're splitting it up into smaller and smaller solid parts. This is not the case. This is a model which they'll present to you in school, but it's not it's not the case because it's easy to present a limited model because it's easier for our minds to understand. But in actuality, this is very complex and confusing and paradoxical and it doesn't make sense. When we look into reality, it's actually constructed and the way to model it is through waves and fields. There's nothing really physical there, which is very, very weird. And so basically, if you'd like to really go further into physics and have a better grasp on the what the perspective of physics and what is actually happening. You need to change 
your idea of what the word physical means. It's not a solid thing. There's nothing solid about reality. The solidity of reality is appearance. It's an appearance that it has. It feels solid, but there's nothing in it. There's no solidness to it. The best way to model these phenomenon or properties which are observed when we look into this is through fields and waves of things like probability waves it's like the wave function i don't want to get too carried away here because this is way past the level which you're currently at right now but i just want to give you some foresight into why this idea of wave is so important because when we look into the fundamental fundamental nature of reality it is has properties and appearance of waves fields it's very different from thinking it like little solid spheres all packed together this is not the case this is not what it looks like it's very difficult to imagine something like this how is it possible that everything around you really contains nothing solid like like your idea of physical is right now like things like this little things like this all packed together this is not the case for me that was an earth-shattering idea and it drove me into physics it's one of the ideas that drove me into physics among other twisted and paradoxical ideas which just i couldn't grasp so i had to go and learn a hell of a lot of mathematics to even come close to conceptualizing and understanding these phenomena. Yep. Just to give you a little foresight there. That's it. I put a lot of work into this worksheet and this video and organizing everything for you. So please like, subscribe and share to people that are doing this kind of study because it will help them out a lot. Just like I hope it helps you out a lot. All right, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video, which will be on the next stage of this wave exploration, which we're doing, which is diffraction, gratings, and polarization, and we'll look deeper into the idea of superposition. Peace out. Your boy might be going a little mental studying, talking about, teaching, and organizing waves god knows how long now um, in this room, but I'll ride this wave. Like, let's think about this. It's, I'll give you a pretty cool insight. There's many ways to think about a thing in terms of waves. We can zoom in and look like into the physical and the nature of waves and what I talked about before, which is a trippy thing anyway to model reality the best way to model it is through waves or we can zoom out and look at this from a higher perspective and see that the pattern of waves this pattern is consistent across the universe it's ups and downs cycles these kind of things so it doesn't isn't just constrained to physics and studying physical nature you know when we look at history this also happens we look at I don't know, culture and maybe even fashion and like even the universe as a whole, if you like zoom out from the entire universe and what's happened, like from the Big Bang from today. I mean, it's been like a cascade, a interference uh, from a point outwards. Like It's a wave, man. It's, there's so much going into this idea of waves. Even if you look at your own life, you go through the motion of, of sort of wave life patterns. And I might be sounding crazy right now, but I don't care. Like you're going through these cycles of ups and downs and the, even the feeling of time and how it progresses in your life. Maybe you'll feel this, you'll go through periods of where time feels very stretched and then sometimes time goes very quickly. You know, it's this wave like pattern to reality on very, many levels and it's super interesting it's a super interesting phenomenon to just observe it and look at it because it's like 
what the hell like, what the hell is going on with this with this wave thing it seems so prominent in the universe and i'm gonna cut myself off here because i'm gonna go on i feel like i could go on a ginormous rant and maybe some people want to hear that but <laughs> the video is already getting so long but well, i did go through a lot but it's getting so long yeah i'm just you know, waves like it's crazy <laughs> They're bloody everywhere. <laughs> they, they're popping up everywhere. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoy this. Hope you found it useful. Um, yeah. Peace out. And if you feel like it, I guess, you know, you could like the video. If you want. But yeah, peace out. I've been doing a lot of thinking recently. I've kind of changed my tune on how I feel about machines and technology. I did used to see them as quite detrimental and in a sense they are to humanity. But I've changed my tune. I've done a lot of thinking, a lot of deep thinking on this. And let's get let's get serious for a second. Yeah, whoa. What is really going on with the with these machines, with these with this technology? Physics, in a sense, here we're trying to give a story, a logical and rational story, to for how these machines came about, how this world that we see right here came about. If you increase your attention and awareness and just look around, machines are deeply integrated into our culture and society. Even in a sense right now, you are communicating with a machine. You're looking, the machine is producing all of this audio and me speaking and all of this like it's producing it for you. You are having, you've never met me. You, you have a relationship with a machine. Yeah, that's what, in, in a sense, in a real sense, that's what's happening. And unconsciously without if i mean for people that aren't paying attention we really are becoming symbiotic with machines meaning we're, we're developing a relationship which is i think now beneficial for both machine and and human i mean we're not actually building this stuff i mean there's not people sitting in a factory building it no a machine built this machine and this machine gets better and the things building it get better it's like what, what's going on here there's like a proliferation of machine production and machinery in the world this technology and when i think about code and stuff like that what 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 is that i'm i'm telling a machine to do something it's a, a way to communicate with the machines and get them to do things People ask the question, you know, is a, is a machine more intelligent than a human? I mean, I don't think that's that's the right question to ask. There's a difference in intelligence, clearly. A machine can do ridiculous computations to do with mathematics, let's say, for example, where a human being can't. But if you try and get a machine to do something simple, like take out my trash, I mean, it's going to take millions and millions of dollars to build a machine to do that. So there's a difference in intelligence, and a child could bloody take out my trash. Yeah, I'm trying to reconnect with what I was feeling like when I was thinking about this because I got into this, I got my mind got traction and I really started to see I mean, what what is what are these machines? Like what is going on here? Like what is really going on with these machines? Like, like I said before Yes, physics is giving us some rational story for how these machines came about. But really when we look into it we don't what so some electrons some particles we learn equations that made these which allowed us to manipulate them and move them around circuits and these circuits then could build into computers and these technologies which now have the capacity they have now that's not a rational jump that's almost like magic like what the fuck is that seriously like what the hell is that how is that even possible I get the sense that utility, using machines to be more productive and 
make our lives easier should have been like a side print, should be a side print in how to use these technologies. And it seems like we've got obsessed with using them for utility. Like, you know, like Uber and shit like this, like this shit is organization and I don't feel like that's the that's the way we should be using them. It's like we've we found a chest of filled with alien <laughs> treasure and we're using it to reach the top shelf. I mean obviously everything I mean it seems like everything is corruptible for human beings. We corrupt, we can corrupt anything. And I feel like machines aren't any different. I mean, if you think that these machines and these platforms and these, the internet and social media and all this thing is not being corrupted and manipulated, you're out of your fucking mind. Of course it is. We're connected across the world. Of course people are, tr are going to corrupt it and try to get it to be used for things of manipulation, control. Of course they're going to use it that way. But if somehow we could see past that and move past that and stop trying to corrupt each other, I mean, these machines, God knows what these machines could be used for. They could change everything, really. I mean, they already have, in a sense, but I don't know what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to get at is I'm not, I don't understand what's going on with these machines, really. How did these come about? Like, I mean, seriously. And they're almost, it feels like magic because you can tell them to do something. I can go on my phone and I can order a pizza. So with my phone, I'm giving it some language in the form of English, which is then being computed through computer programming language to then ping messages through this ethereal thing, through the, just through the air to then go to a restaurant where they start to create a pizza and then give it to someone and then that someone brings it to me. So my little thing is created a cascade of events which have happened. So it's deeply integrated into the physical world and what's going on. I mean, it's remarkable and it, it's almost magical. And, and this is actually not what I was planning to talk about. I think there's something extremely interesting going on with these machines, with these technologies. And it's not something rational and obvious. So yeah. Uh, I guess like, like the video. This is quite a lot of work for me to go through this. It was quite stressful as well. Um, found it quite difficult to go through it all and organize it all. It's just in the organization of all of it teaching it all and putting it all into one, one video is quite quite a lot for me but hopefully it was useful i know some of my explanations in the video weren't that great but i've been feeling quite stressed recently i think i think i need a break of some sort or something but yeah make sure to like the video and i hope you do well in your exams and i've got one more video to do on particle physics which is a deep love of mine so i'm looking forward to that peace out In recent years, I've definitely felt my understanding of what is going on in a really big sense in terms of the universe has deepened, and even rapidly, I would say, in recent times. And this has really um, reconfigured the role that physics plays in my own life and even collectively. I'll give physics some props first. You have every, there's no, pretty much no better thing you could be studying in terms of understanding because physics will give you an understanding of how we think this world around us came about. The ideas in physics is what have sprung to life, modern life, no doubt about it. Um, but I do think that it's very important for us to view physics as a model 
and not as something that's true. That's kind of the feeling that I've, I've really been setting in. This has been disturbing my kind of experience because you do thinking that you probably view the world through some sort of scientific materialist frame. This does shape your experience and as physics starts to fall apart or we put it in its proper place as a model, then uh, it kind of opens up your experience and it can actually allow you to see more. I do s seem to think that physics claims this having this authority uh, where I don't think it really can. And by doing that, it's, it has made us or given us permission to dissect and destroy nature, the world. Um, I like this quote is, uh, I've forgotten who said it. I'm not sure it really matters, but uh, we've tortured nature for its, for her secrets. It's basically what the business of physics has been doing. It's the business is in literally torturing, like cutting into nature to find its secrets. And by placing the natural world or in the fit, in the physics perspective as something that is inanimate, unintelligent. It then allows us to um, destroy it. It gives us permission. And because of this, we've been unconsciously just destroying everything. That is one of the negative side effects I see of, uh, about physics. It's... it's current state lacks this spirit and connectedness. Even though actually all of the physics that we learn, the people that found it or conjured it up, these people had a lot of spirit, yet it's been sort of molded in a direction which is very inhumane, very separate from us. And I like to almost think of physics as a really, really fucking good story. Really good. So good that it allows us to move and manipulate and change reality. Shakespeare's written in English, physics is written in mathematics. At the moment I see mathematics as the biggest set. Physics is being pulled by mathematics. And mathematics is really in it intuitional activity if we really get down to it so the direction or direction of physics if we don't limit it so much will be an intuitional activity also um i don't want to bag on it too much but we, i have a feeling that we've misused it for our own detriment and we don't really understand this idea of balance and how it's important that we need we need to uphold balance in the world if we just neglect nature and treat it as a unintelligent object which can be manipulated and used for our own benefit we're going to have problems little take on it on physics i could speak for hours on physics um so many ideas i have surrounding this but i thought i'd just sit as we've ended the series and talk about it for a for a minute um I feel like it's given a little too much props in a sense like this glorious thing in a lot of ways it is glorious but in a lot of other ways it's actually rather stupid in its approach to reality and to the universe as it says it's this thing that which desires to understand but the state in which i see it in now I feel like it couldn't be far from it. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but... Whatever. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the series overall. hope you do well in your exams. hope you have love and beauty in your life. hope you study hard. hope you can see the wonder. I hope a lot for you. That's it. So...